Mega Trick Trivia Time. Grab your friends and play it online. With Ali and Gina and Taco just for you. It's Mega Trick Trivia Time. And we'll feel it all out. All right, hello, happy Monday, everybody. Uh, my name is Holly with Megatrix Entertainment. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. We are going to be playing some general knowledge trivia here in just a few minutes. Just in case this is your first time playing, please note that in order to participate, you do need to join the online game. You actually have to join separate uh, to YouTube here. You need to join online.vegatrix.com. It's very simple to do. Uh, it's just a website. Once you get there, online.megatricks.com, put in the code TRICKS, T-R-I-C-K-S. You'll see it at the bottom of the screen. If you came uh, via a link on Facebook, you won't have to type in the code. Um, so don't worry if you don't see that. And once you are there, let me try to show you this here. You're going to see a screen asking you for three pieces of information. So first and foremost is your name. That could be a team name, a nickname, anything like that, whatever you want to go by during the competition tonight. Next will be the state that you're playing from. That's optional, but we like seeing where we have individuals joining us from. And lastly is your Bag of Tricks Entertainment loyalty number. If you have one, put it in there. If you don't, you can sign up. There's a link in the description of this video. It's a free program, and this is how you can actually earn and keep taco bucks to trade in for real prizes in the future. Once you have those three items in, click on go you see this screen it says the game will begin shortly that means you're all set nothing else you need to do you just hang tight while we wait for people to join I still see people joining uh, right now so we'll hang on just a couple minutes and in the meantime I will tell you about the other events we have coming up this week and how we'll play trivia I'm not by myself tonight taco is here Gina's here every time taco you were being perfectly nice and not licking yourself before I put the camera on you um, so <laughs> Uh, this week, we have trivia, obviously, right now happening, general knowledge trivia. And then on Wednesday, doubleheader, we have Bobby K with Music Bingo. It's Thanksgiving Eve, so we have Bobby K playing some awesome songs on Wednesday at 7 p.m. And then Wednesday at 9 p.m., we have Friendsgiving trivia. So it's Friends trivia, all about the TV show Friends. Uh, because we're doing it the day before Thanksgiving, we're going to have an emphasis on the episodes that revolve around Thanksgiving. So questions will come from all the seasons and all the episodes, but uh, it will definitely pay off if you watch the Thanksgiving episodes before this Wednesday. If you're planning to participate in Friends oh, trivia, yeah, there's a tip I can give you. Watch the Friends Thanksgiving episodes if you want to have a little bit of a leg up on everybody. Oh, everyone's having some volume issues. I don't know if they can't hear. Is it low or high? Low. Oh, yeah, I turned it down because before it was really high. All right, should be good, guys. Yeah, thanks for checking out. Check, 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 check. Taco didn't like that. <laughs> All right, should be better now. Yeah, better. All right, cool. Thanks for letting me know. Um, so, yeah, right back to it, Taco. Um, that's Wednesday, 7 o'clock, music bingo, 9 o'clock, uh, friends trivia and then on Friday we're back at 7 o'clock for general knowledge trivia um, so please join us for any or all of these events if you can we would love to have you tonight as I mentioned is general knowledge trivia and as all of our public events are tonight's event is free so thank you for joining us but you will see these links down below us all night Venmo PayPal and Zelle those are the three platforms that we do accept any tips or donations that you'd like to send by no means required you can play uh, for free tonight you don't have to send anything but if you do we really appreciate it those tips those donations that you send to us help us pay for the platforms that we use when we host trivia for you um, so thank you to those of you that have already donated whether it was tonight or any time in the past we really appreciate it um, so those links will be here all night and what else do I usually talk about I don't know well, I feel like I, in the chat. I feel like I haven't done this for like a, a year but it was just yesterday Michelle Korn She's back. What kind of guitar is hanging behind you? Michelle, uh, imagine the cheapest guitar you can think of. That one's cheaper. <laughs> I don't I think I literally found it at a garage sale uh, and they gave it to me or 
I don't, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's a Meister. It's a Squire. It's like one of those things that you get off the infomercial that I probably begged my dad to get me when I was 11. Um, same thing with my Esteban acoustic guitar. Uh, so I just have fun with them. But thanks for asking. I appreciate it. From JC Penny, Probably, Brad. Most likely. All right. Um, so tonight's game, we are playing for fun, but we're also playing for Taco Bucks. So if you win first, second, or third place tonight, you're going to earn some Taco Bucks. And as I mentioned, those go to your Begatrix loyalty program number. So if you don't have one of those, check out the link in the description of this video and get yourself signed up. If you do... You're all set. If you win first, second, or third, you earn Taco Bucks, and in the future, you can use them to redeem for real prizes like Begatrix merchandise, pop culture merchandise, beer and brewery merchandise, and, of course, right in the middle, the framed and autographed photo of this guy right here, Taco. Uh, so, with that said, tonight's event is also sponsored by Downtime Coffee out of Lockport, Illinois, a small, local craft coffee roastery where you can check out delicious single origin and soon to be blended coffees from all over the world in very small batches typically weekly right now you can just find them on instagram at downtime coffee uh soon you'll be able to join their email list and you'll be the first to find out about the upcoming roasts and when you can get your coffee so huge shout out huge thank you to downtime coffee please check them out give them a follow on instagram if you haven't yet with that said, we are going to get into the game here in just a second. So, as I mentioned, make sure you join the online game because you're not going to answer on YouTube. You're going to answer via our online game system, online.begatrix.com. Enter in that code TRIX, T-R-I-C-K-S. That's all you have to do. And then put in those three pieces of information. You'll be all set to go. Tonight's game is a mixture of multiple choice questions and then questions you're going to have to type your answer in. So we'll start out with multiple choice. Take it a little easy on you at the beginning. And then we'll switch things up. How it works for the multiple choice questions, I will ask you the question and then I'll start your question timer. Once the timer starts, you'll have 25 seconds to answer. For the multiple choice round, there will be four options on your screen. It'll be A, B, C, and D, and one of them will be correct. So all you have to do to earn points is correctly choose the answer. If you are right, you can earn up to 150 points, but that's based on how quickly you answer. So make sure if you know the answer, you click it right away. Don't wait. Um, if you're not sure of the answer, take a guess because you don't lose any points if you're wrong. However, if you click something, you can't change it to another answer. So don't just click wildly in an attempt to be quick about it. But um, also you don't wanna hesitate because you're gonna earn more points the faster you answer. Uh, thank you for the donation, Therese. Thank you. Jess, for the donation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and thanks for the share on Instagram, Irresistible Finds. Uh, and Mert Whirlin, I saw a post that tagged us. Uh, thank you so much. It was a lot of fun. We hosted a private event uh, this weekend for one of our loyal Big of Tricks Entertainment online trivia players and that actually reminds me right now to mention if you're interested especially going into this holiday season um, obviously we can't all physically be together and we're going to be doing this online publicly for you for as long as possible but in addition if you'd like to set up a private game of trivia for you and your family or you and your friends you and your co-workers we do that you can find the info uh on our uh website it's bagoftricks.com there's a form you can fill out to request a date uh or you could just email me it's ollie at bagoftricks.com for some more information and i will say between now and january our spots are becoming very very limited we can only host so many events per day and per week uh, it's not just myself we have three other incredibly talented hosts that do these events for us online um, and even with all four of us doing this, thankfully, extremely thankfully, we're, we're getting pretty booked up between now and January. So do check it out if you're interested in doing that. Um, like I said, all the information's on our website and we would love to host something to keep you guys as together as you can be with your friends and family while we're all doing our part and not actually being together. Um, so with that little ad out of the way, we're gonna get into this game. The very first question tonight is a practice question, which means it's not gonna be worth any points. Um, but other than that, it's just like the rest of the questions. And we do it this way so that if you haven't played trivia before, um, you can get a feel for what the system is like. So with that said, cheers, everybody. Thanks for being here. Let's have some fun. Some trivia on a Monday night. Mm -hmm. Question one, what is the name of your host today? That's me. This is the practice question. Not worth any points. What is 
my name? Is it Mike, Jeff, Eddie, or Ali? What is the name of your host today? Who's out here speaking of names? Hey, Matt. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you wanted me to mention who it was, but it was Matt Whalen, Mert Werlin, and Learn Fernigan. We did a private event, and it, I had so much fun. We did it through Zoom. We had a music round in there. It was a bunch of fun, guys. Uh, so Matt and, and Lauren, specifically, thanks for setting that up for Matt, and happy birthday again. Uh, John J., welcome. Christiane, what's up? Middleton, Lenz, Jess, Michelle, Lindsay, Stephanie, Amy. So many fantastic people out here. Hey, Jen Sterna, time to win some Taco Bucks. Yes, yes, yes. Brad Silzer, welcome. Hey, Sarah. Kevin Flug, there's a name I haven't seen in a while. Uh, Mert Werlin. Mary B. Hello, Mary. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, yeah, Lindsay got coffee. Lindsay got stickers today. It was a nice surprise. Hey, Jen Widener. Uh, one person said my name is Mike. Two people said Jeff. Four people said Eddie. And 25 people correctly said my name is Ollie. Unfortunately, I'm not in Pearl Jam. Uh, that's okay, though. One day. They do go through drummers, although Cameron's been there for <laughs> 20 years now. He's doing okay. All right. Question two. It's going to start counting now. Here we go. Four points. Uh, more than four. 150 points. It's four 150 points. I don't know. Question number two. What does the symbol H stand for on the periodic table? What element does H represent on the periodic table? Is it helium, mercury, hydrogen, or potassium? Lindsay, it makes it even better that you uh, weren't there when we announced it and it was a complete surprise that you had stickers. I loved it. I didn't tell you that, did I? No, that's fun though. Yeah. I like that. Jen Sterna placed her order for an ornament just now. Great job. Thanks, Jen. I just saw that come through. Yeah, those ornaments are uh, legitimately, I, I am a salesman at heart, but I'm not selling you when I say they're extremely limited. Um, we're not ordering any more this year. We have what I have from uh, from previous from last year. Um, so if you'd like one, we'd love to see it hanging on your tree. Um, and yeah, they're on the website right now. Everybody's in. Two people said helium. One person said mercury. Thirty-one people said hydrogen. Thirty-one people were correct. First on there, hydrogen. All right, good job. Ninety-one percent of you. That's a social cheers, everybody. Question number three. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise originated as what? So in which of the following formats did the Ninja Turtles franchise originate? Was it a novel, a TV cartoon, a comic book, or a feature film? Twist our arm, why don't ya? Um, yeah, Jess, don't, uh, if you guys are going to get one, don't put an order through the website right now because you, you already have coffee coming, so I can throw it in um, with your coffee order. Just, I mean, downtime coffee, I'll let them, I'll send them a note, um, you know, that, that we can put it in with their order that's going to you. Save you some shipping. All right, everybody's in. One person said a feature film, nine people said the TV cartoon, 25 people said comic books, and in this instance, 25 people were correct. It was a comic book originally, and it was in black and white. Uh, so the only thing differentiating them were their weapons and their personalities. Um, stroke of genius when they went to color that they got their individual colors the purple the orange the red the blue uh, but yeah started out as black and white comic book and then to TV and then feature films and I'm sure there are novels uh, and board games question number four <laughs> there's some easy ones tonight there's some tough ones this is not a tough one what department store of the ones listed has an annual Thanksgiving Day parade in New York City that is broadcast nationally is it Bloomingdale's Bergdorf Goodman Saks Fifth, Fifth Avenue, or Macy's? Um, they're still doing it this year, I think, so. In some? I was wondering. I was going to look it up um, when I was writing this question, what they were doing. Sarah marched it in 97. Nice. You can watch it while we prepare our... Our turkey breast casserole? Our turkey Thanksgiving casserole? Yeah, Lindsay, absolutely do it for yourself. Put that tree up. And Amy, I would love to host an event. I just saw that. We should definitely do something for y'all. 
All right, everybody's in. One person said Bloomingdale's. 36 people correctly said Macy's. The Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Uh, it's been around forever, I believe since 1924, but it's not the oldest in the United States. There's one that happens in Philadelphia that's about four years older. Um, but Macy's certainly the most famous. Question number five. What coming-of-age novel about a bunch of teens in Tulsa, Oklahoma, was published when the author was just 18 years old? Is it Blue Sky Dream, Boy's Life, The Outsiders, or The Wanderers? The Wanderers. <laughs> Becky, late again, had parent-teacher conferences. Well, thanks for joining. Not too late. Yeah, not too late. Not Gimbals? I don't, maybe it was. Brad. Gimbals is only from year 12 and 34. Yeah, and in Elf, which even though it wasn't actually around at the time, that's the... Macy's yeah, it was Gimbal's in Philadelphia, Brad. You're right. Gimbal's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. No, but you were right. It might have been an elf reference, but you were right. It actually is Gimbal's <laughs> in Philadelphia. Uh, everybody's in. One person said Blue Sky Dream. One person said Boy's Life. 34. One person said The Wanderers. 34 people said S.E. Hinton's The Outsiders. The Outsiders, written, I believe... A long time ago she was young she was 18 uh, and actually that's why she went by se Hinton because a uh, female author writing this book was not as well accepted so she decided to try and hide that uh, that's question five and everybody's in so we're gonna take a look at the standings for the very first time here we go currently in first place we have batty in second Merton Lerney in second also tied to the point Sarah mad dad out there what's up rich age 55 Sorella sand it's over banana kin uh, Kevin Flug in 8th, Jen Sterna in ninth, 3 Bananas and a Papaya in 10th, Mary B in 11th, Just Stay Home in 12th, Lightning Thunder, Eat Turkey, <laughs> I love it, in 13th, Jen Widener in 14th, A Poo Poo and a Pee Pee in 15th, First Responders Rock in 16th, Ah Ooh, Werewolves in Lockdown in 17th, Screw It, Bring on the Yams, <laughs> Yams in 18th, S Green Leaf with Envy in 19th, Something's cuddling. <laughs> yeah, you can be whatever cuddling you want tonight. Public game. Uh, 21st, Let's Get Quizzical in 22nd. Team name, team name in 23rd. Lindsay, 24th, Dropkick Emily Murphy's. I like that. 24th, Denied as Moot. It's just a moo point. <laughs> like a cow's opinion. Uh, in 26th, Fondue Fancy Pants. In 27th, Duck Horns. 28th, Mama Lens, Bill and Lucy in 29th. Oh, Bill and yeah. Lucy? Yeah, I recognize yeah. that name. What's up, Bill? Thanks for playing. Yeah, thanks for playing. JMO in 30th, Team Cream in 31st, Ashley Ann in 32nd, Hilton Garden in HVAC in 33. Um, Huckleberry in 34th, A Whole Numero Uno in 35th, Quarantine Kate in 36th, and The Birthday Girl, Happy Birthday, in 37th. I will not read all of those names every time. As I've mentioned before, I like to read them at least the once so you can all hear your names because I love them and I like to see them all before we move on. Uh, Dropkick Emily Murphy's The Angelicas. That's a good one. Yeah, it is. <laughs> all right. Everybody is in. Oh, quiet, Siri. Um, question number six. In 1932... What was the first city to host the Winter Olympic Games in the United States back in 1932? It was the first city to host the Olympic Games, the Winter Olympic Games in the U.S. Is it Chicago, Lake Placid, Squaw Valley, or Salt Lake City? This is actually not a repeating gift. She's just been she's been spinning the whole time. This is a video. She's going. I think she won bronze for this. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, thanks for the donation, Rich. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Somebody else that has some delicious downtime coffee waiting for him. I hear from downtime coffee. All right, everybody's in. You guys did well on this. Uh, five people said Salt Lake City. Two each said Chicago and Squaw Valley. But the correct answer, uh, there's an interesting movie called <laughs> Lake Placid. Lake Placid, New York. 27 of you got it right. Yeah, right? Uh, question number seven in, uh, here's another easy, I don't know, I was feeling nice tonight. In Harry Potter, 
the series, the books, the movies, the entire universe. Hedwig the Owl. Uh, ooh, I have to change. Uh, I, mean, I don't want to make everybody cry. Belonged to whom? Was it Ron Weasley, Ginny Weasley, Harry Potter, or Hermione Granger? That's fair. That's fair. I usually try not to say that questions are easy or hard. Um, but I feel... Up, buddy. Yeah, I always do. For real, uh, still too soon. I'm sorry, John. Family loves when you do Harry Potter uh -huh. trivia. Thanks, Johnny. We have one coming up. Um, thanks for the unintentional shout-out. Uh, on December 14th, December 14th, we have Harry Potter trivia. That's another one of our um, library trivia series sponsored by the Fountaindale Library out of Bolingbrook. Um, we'll be doing Harry Potter trivia on December 14th at 7 p.m. That'll be open to the public. It's free to play. Um, so please do join us for that. That's going to be a lot of fun. That'll be right here on YouTube December 14th. Mark your calendars now. Should be an event on Facebook soon, too, for that. Uh, four people said Ron. Three people said Ginny. One person said Hermione. And 29 people said Harry Potter. Uh, great job, 29 people. All right, question number eight. In the year 2000, in the year 2000, Breathe by what singer became the first country song since 1959 to top the year-end Billboard Hot 100 chart? Breathe in the year 2000 was by which artist? Leanne Rimes, Carrie Underwood, Shania Twain, or Faith Hill? Are people getting pie? Are you guys talking about pies? Yeah, we're just going to get caramel apple pecan pie. That are sounds amazing. Oh, we're gonna so. we're gonna bake some pies. Yeah, we all say we travel far for food. So. Yeah, if you guys want to travel to Lockport, we'll we'll set up a little pie shop here. <laughs> will we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we currently have four ovens. So we need that's to... <laughs> true. I mean, I'd love to see them. Five, if we plug the one that's in the, the, the garage. <laughs> Two, two people said Leanne Rhymes, three people said Carrie Underwood, five people said Shania Twain, and 27 people said Faith Hill. Uh, the correct answer was, in fact, Faith Hill. Good job. Guys, you're making me hungry. Yeah, let's stop talking about pie for a minute. Number nine. This is my favorite question tonight. Which U.S. president received a live raccoon as a Thanksgiving gift? This is a gift offered as dinner. But there's a happy ending. Which U.S. president received a live raccoon as a Thanksgiving gift? Was it Ulysses S. Grant, Theodore Roosevelt, Calvin Coolidge, or William McKinley? All right, everybody's in. Let's see how we did here. Two people said Grant, 16 people said Coolidge, 18 people said Theodore Roosevelt. Roosevelt. The correct answer was, in fact, Calvin Coolidge. Calvin Coolidge. And here's some extra info for you. The raccoon's name was Rebecca. Um, the Rebecca came from Mississippi. She was sent to the White House to be served for dinner, in, bless you, in 1926. But the Coolidge's decided to keep her as a pet instead. For Christmas, an embroidered collar was made for her inscribed with the title White House Raccoon. Uh, she enjoyed participating in the annual White House Easter egg roll. My heart. She was fed shrimp and persimmons and eggs were a favorite. She went around loose in the White House and walked on a leash outdoors. She was known to unscrew light bulbs, open cabinets, and unpot house plants. Well, she sounds like a treat. <laughs> oh, I love it so much. Uh, question 10. The parrot from the 1992 film Aladdin shares its name with which Shakespearean villain? 1992 mm -hmm. Disney film Aladdin. What was the name of the parrot? Was it Shylock, Iago, Othello, or Jafar? I want a raccoon named Rebecca, too. Uh, apparently, one of the I security guards, <laughs> uh, one of the security guards at the White House, uh, adopted his own raccoon named Reuben oh. to be friends with Rebecca. But Reuben just peaced out; he ran away. 
That's really cute. Ruben was like, I don't want any part of this. <laughs> Sorry. That's really cute, though. All right. Wow, you guys know this very well. Two people said Jafar. Uh, this guy liked to hang out on Jafar's shoulder. It was Iago, Gilbert Gottfried. Oh. I can't, I, that's an impression I can't even attempt, Gilbert Gottfried. I had a friend who could do a killer oh, gosh. Gilbert Gottfried impression. Um, question number, that's a social. Cheers, everybody. Question 11, final multiple choice question. Texas shares 1,954 miles of border with Mexico. Which of the following options is not a Texas border city? Three of these cities are on the border between Texas and Mexico. Which of these is not considered a Texas border city? Is it Yuma, El Paso, Laredo, or Brownsville? Oh, hold on, that's in the band of posters. Laredo. Laredo. Uh, Chris, that's how I got to where I'm at. I used to say raccoon just as a joke, but now it slips in like when I'm just talking about raccoons and I say raccoon. Never had pumpkin pie. Yeah. We still don't know what kind we're making. Um, I want to make something with some fancy lattice work. Let's okay. make some fun stuff on top. Can we do a la mode, whatever it is? Yeah. Four people said El Paso. Oh, and are we still doing border questions? Eight people said Laredo. Ten people said Brownsville. And 13 people said Yuma. Uh, yes, it's been a while since border questions. Uh, the correct answer, most of you got. Well, not most, but more than the rest. Yuma is the correct answer here. Yuma. All right, that's it for this round. Let's take a look at the standings once again. Currently in first is now Rich H55. Sorella Sand up into second. Just stay home in third. Everybody else, take a look, see where you're at. We'll get into the next round here in just a few. Things are going to change. You will no longer be typing or choosing from multiple choice options. You're actually going to be typing your answers in. Uh, so what that means, whether you're on your phone or your computer, it's going to work the same. I will ask you the question, and then rather, uh, when I start your timer, rather than seeing four options appear on your screen, you're going to see a text box. And once the timer starts, the text box opens up, and you have to type your answer in, hit submit, before time runs out. You still have 25 seconds. If you are correct, you're going to earn all the points. These are worth 250 points apiece. If you're wrong, you're going to earn zero points. Um, but the cool thing is, if you're wrong, you still don't lose any points. So it still makes sense to take a guess, even if you're not sure of the answer. The other difference is that rather than these being random questions from all over the place, the next five questions are from the same category. So this is what we call a mini bonus round. They're all worth 250 points a piece. We do one at a time. But the next five questions, um, I was writing Matt Whalen's uh, trivia for the weekend and uh, had this on my mind. So these five questions are about Broadway musicals. We're going to do Broadway musicals. And what it is, is I'm going to give you the opening line of a Broadway musical. And you just have to tell me which musical it is. Some of these are uh, simple. Some of them might be a little tougher. Um, but overall, even if you're not a huge fan of Broadway, you can at least take some guesses here, some educated guesses. Um, these are all pretty popular films, I would say, or, or musical, uh, I'd say top 20, maybe even top 15, top 10 musicals of all time uh, in terms of how many people have seen them. So. Nothing crazy here. I'm going to give you the first line of a musical. You tell me what musical it is. Trash Pandas. So I'm just catching up on this chat. I miss a lot of it. Everyone had their own little raccoon story. I love no, that. I like raccoon King Trashmouth and his husband Gary? Yeah, and Jonathan, his husband Gary. Ah, uh, yes, my man he John. He had a stuffed raccoon named Snoop. And I could Mark listen. drew a picture of a raccoon and left it in the public school. God, I could listen to Rocky Raccoon every day of my life. <laughs> All right, here we go. Question number 12 is the first one in our musicals. This is a tough one. Name this Broadway musical. How does a bastard, orphan, son of a whore, and a Scotsman, what is the musical that has this as its opening line? A what? Gay kid. When it's 
kids covered this time they did son of a girl it's a girl son of a girl and a scots oh i like that dropped in the middle of a forgot spot in the caribbean alexander hamilton yeah thanks alexander <laughs> yeah yeah uh, so I'm guessing this Amy J.K. Bella screamed the answer across Aww. the house. Hey, Bella, what's up? Uh, the correct answer is Hamilton. Hamilton. For anybody else um, that's been looking, I've been keeping my eye out for the, the vinyl, the, um, the, the full vinyl collection of Hamilton, just because we enjoy listening to records here. And it's finally back in stock at regular retail price. I got it out of like Best Buy Online or something. Um, it's not anymore, Steph. I mean, it's four discs, so it's definitely more expensive than a typical vinyl, but I think I got it for like 60 or 65 bucks, um, which for four discs, and it's cool. It's in a collector's edition box, and it comes with a booklet, um, so it's pretty cool. Um, if you're interested, yeah, it's certainly you know more than your, your standard single double-sided disc, but it's four discs um double-sided so i definitely if you're interested it's in stock you don't have to pay extra people were trying to flip it for a million dollars online uh, but check it out it's just downright rude yeah i hate that hi bella welcome 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 uh rich i saw this because i am very cultured congratulations question 13 what musical starts with this line on the 23rd day of the month of september in an early year of a decade not too long before our own the human race suddenly encountered encountered a deadly threat to its very existence Do you know this one? And this may this might be the musical film. I think it's the same in the musical. I think I've only seen the film. Tell us again how you saw it in Puerto Rico, Richie. A lot of you got this. Uh, it's not hair, cats, rent, Mary Poppins, Book of Mormon. When is Star Wars trivia? I don't know. It's sometime. We did it not too long ago, like literally last month, I think we did, but we'll do it again. Uh, it's not cats. It's not spam a lot. This is Little Shop of Horrors. Little Shop of Horrors. I never would have thought of it. Like, I know it's a musical. It doesn't right. register. My uncle was in this musical. Michael? Yes. Oh, <laughs> nice. I hate A I see from Chimpan A to Chimpan Z. Question number 14. Name the Broadway musical of this opening line. Are you blind when you're born? Can you see in the dark? Looking forward to any return to Game of Thrones. Yeah, Sarah, I think I'm still just, I'm still healing from the finale. It's been tough to just revisit the, the universe. But I, I do want to start rereading the books. I never finished. I think I only read the first one or two. Um, but I also told myself I didn't want to start until all the books are finished because I don't want to be sitting there waiting. At least this way I can't be hurt if it doesn't happen. Everybody's in cats. Meow. Uh, cats is the correct answer. Cats. Oh, that's a crispy social. Cheers. Somebody wrote Helen Kelly. Jesus. Jesus Christ. Oh, no. I'm not a fan of that. Oh, God. Number 15, name the Broadway musical by this opening line. Look down, look down. Don't see him in the eye. Don't look him in the eye. I apologize. Look down, look down. Don't look him in the eye. Ooh, Sarah, I have not watched, uh, read those novella, novellas, but I think I would like them. I've always been into the Dunkin' Egg stuff in terms of wanting to know more about it. God, I read it as Drunken Eggs, and I was like, sounds good. Oh, drunken eggs does sound good. Like drunken noodles? Dunk and egg. Tiger, we did Tiger King trivia, Fishing with Johnny. We did that back in March. We probably won't do it again. Uh, but you can check it out if you just want to watch some fun stuff. It's on YouTube. It's on our page, youtube.vegatrix.com. All right, you guys did better on this one. 
marking a bunch of these correct. It's not West Side Story. It's not Chicago, Hamilton, Cats. <laughs> Can you imagine Hamilton casted with everybody in Cats? Like, yes, from yes, ca I can. <laughs> oh, it'd be so cute. The correct answer is Les Mis. Like extra sad. Les Mis Rome. Les Mis Rome. Is that how I say it? Les Mis Rome. Yeah, exactly. Do you me a favor? Can you have a second? Just what you need. There, just some of that old overhaul. All right, here we go. Number 16, final question in this round. Good news, she's dead. First line of which musical? Good news, she's dead. Becky, I got Hamilton correct. No, that's good. If this one is a Helen Keller, I'll be surprised. No, this is the best one you guys did. Uh, the correct answer, <laughs> every son-in-law, Jesus. Uh, no, not true, I love my mother-in-law. Wicked. Wicked is correct. Wicked, 94%. This is one that I have seen live and I loved it. Uh, let's take a look at the standings. Sorella Sand is now up into first. We got a Broadway fan here. Jen Widener in second. The Corns in third. Uh, we have Lindsay in fourth. Merton Lurney in fifth. Everybody else, take a look. See where you're at. We have another mini bonus round coming up here in just a second. But I'm going to let this rotate through so you guys can see. Such a perky death announcement, yes. Good news, she's dead. Oh, thank you. All right, okay, Taco. She's back, you can lay down. It's okay. Yeah, I know. Ready, up and down. Lay down. Nope, that's, that's the opposite. Did you just say you love my mom? Yeah, of course. All right, here we go. The next round is the same. Uh, not, not, not Broadway musicals. Rich H, don't have a heart attack. Uh, it is a different category, but it's the same format. We're going to do five questions, uh, one at a time. They're all from the same category. This next round is actually all about literature, but twist, it has nothing to do with the books. It is all about the authors, and this is a picture round. So I'm gonna show you a picture of a famous author. You have to tell me who it is. That's it, it's a picture round. I'm gonna show you a picture of an author. You're gonna tell me who the author is. Some of these will be pretty easy, some of these will be pretty tough, but they're worth 250 points a piece. Uh, what decade, 1860s, yes. All right, <laughs> here we go. Uh, first one, this one might be the easiest of the round, we'll see. Uh, name this famous author. Last name's fine for any of these. Last name's okay, uh, but first and last will work as well. What is the name of this famous author? Okay, you wanna lay back down? Good boy. Uh, speaking of authors, anybody a fan, uh, and don't tell me if you're not, because I don't care. Anybody a fan of Ready Player One? Ernest Klein, because Ready Player Two comes out tomorrow. Uh, in case you weren't aware of that, I don't feel that the marketing around it has been great because I found out and then forgot and then found out again today. Uh, found out and then forgot. Yeah, Ready Player Two <laughs> comes out tomorrow. Um, yes, Jen, we found out by accident when I was looking for a new book on Audible uh, and then uh, got excited and then forgot. Yay. And Are then we I looked. Have to listen to the audiobook? Are we going to. Is it. I don't know. That's a great question. Um, but let's look at this. Somebody trying to trick me with the Samuel Clemens. Samuel Langhorn. Uh, it's not Einstein. Not Hemingway. This is Mark Twain. That's a social. Cheers. Sarah, if you liked the movie, you would love the book because Gina loved the book and hated the movie, as many people did. Um, yeah, the book is infinitely better than the movie. 
Um, so if you like the movie, you'll you love the book. The references that yeah, are in the book? it's incredible. I've read so I've read Ready Player One five times. I think we've listened to it twice. It's great. Yeah, I, yeah. I love it. Yeah. And I also like rereading books. Name this famous author. Speaking of me rereading books. Oh, what a photo! I know. I went old school. Everybody's in. You know who he looks like in this photo? He looks like Jermaine Clement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a who from Whoville, somebody said. Aww. Mark Twain's son. No, this is that guy. <laughs> this is Stephen King. Uh, this is one of my favorite authors. I've showed you guys this before, but I like showing it off because I'm making headway on it. This is my Stephen King novels checklist. I just checked off uh, three more. Uh, the Outsider, If It Bleeds, and Different Seasons, which is... Uh, one of his most popular novella compilations. That's the one that has Shawshank Redemption and uh, Apt Pupil and The Body, which is Stand By Me. So yeah, good job, good job, 85% of you. And thanks for indulging my fun sidelines here. Who is this? Name this famous author. You need to check more off your <laughs> Song of Ice and Fire list. Yeah, Sarah, I'm stuck on Stephen King right now. I'm pausing on Stephen King just to do Ready Player Two. Uh, but I've just been nonstop listening to King books when I am I go walking or I woodwork. Um, and it's just fantastic audiobooks to listen to. All right, everybody's in. It's not James Patterson, it's not Kipling. Papa. Boy, I'm Papa. dumb. No, you're not. Just, these category uh, rounds are not for everybody. We do them uh, because I enjoy doing these mini rounds. But please understand that you're going to run into questions and rounds sometimes. You'll have no idea. That doesn't mean you're dumb. That just means oh. you don't know a lot about this round. Yeah. Uh, and there are a million things to know about. The guy from the Quaker Oats commercials. Uh, it's Ernest Hemingway. This is Hemingway. Watch Rose Red. Yeah, it's on my list. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Fishing with Johnny's sister. Rose Red, yes. Looks like Cliff Clavin without the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number 20, name this famous author. This is the toughest one of the round. Name this famous author. Look at those pin curls. Mm-hmm. What's a pin curl? You see the curls? Oh, the curls in her hair? It's literally, you twist them with, you know, you know flip or whatever, and then you put hair clip in and pin it. Jeez. And then a lot of times you comb it out, like the 20 slapper look. Yeah, oh, I I should try that. <laughs> I'll do it for New Year's. Season. Thank you. Guys, we'll do a New Year's party. I'll be in pin curls. A flapper dress. All right, let's see. Now, I feel dumb, too. <laughs> Dorothy Parker, Jane Austen, Mary Shelley, Anne Rice, Anne Rand, Margaret Mitchell, Margaret Atwood, Virginia Woolf. Yeah. Lots of fantastic guesses. This is Agatha Christie, and 12 of you got this. So congratulations. That's a great job. This is the toughest one of the round, and 12 oh my of you God. got it. <laughs> That's FDR. He was a president. Oh, my God. Uh, question 21. Final author, and most attractive author in my opinion who are we looking at velvet suit there yeah what a look middle part chilling velvet suit probably holding his own book just like <laughs> what's up i wrote this it's maybe a diary hubba hubba said brad Uh, Sarah said, I see Nick Cage here. Yeah, I can see a young Nick Cage here. Stepping off the plane on Con Air, hair blowing in the wind. Remember when you bought a velvet tie and the yeah. guy was like, thought it was the funniest thing? Ever. Yeah, and he worked at Adam Driver, <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, this is Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde. Irish Oscar Wilde. Good job, everybody. Even if this wasn't your round, you made it through. It's over now. Uh, Jen Widener's up into first. Dropkick Emily Murphy's in second. Denied as moot in third. Everybody else, take a look. See where you're at. Oh, taco with your bubble tea. We need an Adam Driver Oscar Wilde biopic. I'm here for that. No, I'm super here for that. All right, we have seen where we're at. So here's what's gonna happen. We have uh, 10 questions left. The final questions here are like the first round, completely random. They are not part of a category. They're not all part of one single round. So don't worry, um, but they are gonna be tougher overall as a round. Some of these won't be too tough and they're worth 300 points a piece. The main difference from the first round is, again, you have to type the answer in. You're not gonna have multiple choice options uh, coming up for you. So typing your answers in, you get 300 points if you're correct and you still do not lose any points if you're wrong. So take a guess, even if you're not sure. Some of them easy, some of them tough. Uh, and here we go, question 22. Who famously interrupted Taylor Swift's accept acceptance speech at the 2009 Video Music Awards? Who famously interrupted Taylor Swift's acceptance speech 2009 music video awards. Don't remind me. Do you know this was 11 years ago? Also, don't remind me. <laughs> also, where's my vinyl? Mm. Where's my folklore? Yeah, where's proud. folklore? I thought I'd get it by Thanksgiving. My sister has her. It's going to die mad. Campaign. <laughs> All right, everybody's in. A uh, big, uh, wide range of answers here. All about the same person. Kanye West 2024, President Kanye West, Kanye a real hero, Kanye and Kanye what a D-bag. Um, yeah, he got as about as many votes as... I don't even have a good example. It but was not a lot. 20, 20, Jess knows. Yeah, it's a ridiculous number, the fact that he got any. Uh, but the correct answer is Kanye West. Kanye West. Remember when he just made like great music? I'm all about celebrities having opinions and tell me what you want, I don't care. But he's fucking crazy, I'm sorry. Question 23, as a protest to Hollywood's portrayal of Native Americans in film, Marlon Brando declined an Academy Award for his performance in what movie? What film did Marlon Brando win an Academy Award for and decline to accept famously? What film? No, we all agreed we only had to learn about one Canadian woman, Kim Campbell, narrowly etched out Pam Anderson. I, I read the other day that um, the first Borat film is the reason that Pam Anderson and Kid Rock got divorced. Borat? Yeah. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, I forgot yeah. they were in it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, not him, but she was. And apparently, like, I his... Mean, if if that's going to cause a divorce with your marriage, that's your own. Yeah, on his reason for, like, divorce, it was Borat. <laughs> Borat. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, let's yeah, this see. Is a very handsome gift. No idea, but love that I'm learning this at Begatrix Trivia. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, I love this gift of Marlon Brando. Like, in the film we're talking about, which, let me just tell you, is The Godfather. The correct answer is Godfather. He's not exactly the, the peak of, you know... I think his attractiveness level in Hollywood, but this gift. I mean, but the orange slide is pretty cute. Yeah, that's adorable. <laughs> that's fair. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, the Godfather was the correct answer. Question 24. The vehicle manufacturer Volvo was founded in what country? Vehicle manufacturer Volvo founded in what country? 
This is the cutest. That is a yeah. That's a good gift. All right, everybody's in. I was hoping Marcus would be here for this one. Um, the correct. What uh, Sarah just said. Oh, did she? Yeah, where's Marcus? The correct answer: Sweden. Sweden, the country of Europe. Somebody said, "Oh, Sweden." The correct answer. All right, question twenty-five. What is the name? <laughs> I just saw the gift for the offspring of a male donkey and a female horse. What do you call the offspring of a male donkey and a female horse? Everybody's in. Uh, so it's not a hinny, uh, which is actually the opposite. Um, so a hinny is a female donkey and a male horse, and it's much, much rarer. Then a mule. The correct answer is a mule. Somebody said Lil Sebastian rules. Uh, a mule is the correct answer here. Uh, all right, here are the standings now. Jen Widener still in first. Dropkick Emily Murphy's in second. Denied is Moot in third. Just stay home in fourth. Sarah Les and in fifth. Everybody else, take a look. See where you are at. We just have six questions left. Worth 300 points apiece. I saw, I saw a meme today that said my wife and I are in an argument because I told her that a pregnant horse would run faster than a non-pregnant horse because it has two horsepower. <laughs> the one horsepower versus two horsepower. Wow, wow. Honestly, it makes sense to me. Wawa. What does Borat say? Wawa, wee wah. Yeah, wah wah wee wah. Dad jokes. Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, it's a dad joke. And a mom joke. Oh, and a mom joke. With the, that was a dad joke inception. You made a dad <laughs> joke about a mom joke. Oh lord. I'm here for it. All right, here we go. Final, in my final six questions. Uh, question number twenty six. Which Scandinavian nation? Physically lies between Norway and Finland. Which Scandinavian nation lies between Norway and Finland? Haunches is a word that sounds inherently creepy, even though it's not. Yeah. yeah. But the word hunches doesn't. Yeah, it's that uh, extra A. I didn't want to give this away earlier, but here was another one that I was just, I guess I put all my chips in on Marcus being here tonight. I was trying to show him some love. This again was Sweden. Wow, Two answers we tonight were Sweden. Yeah, yeah, once with cars. Uh, this one was geographical for you shower curtain owners out there. In between Norway and Finland, you would have Sweden. Denmark is below Norway, I believe. Uh, Denmark directly south, um, but Sweden is in between. All right, here we go. Yeah, hashtag double Sweden. Uh, question 27. Yeah, here's an easy one, I think. I, I said I wasn't going to say that, but I think you guys can do this. The Heisman Memorial Trophy is awarded annually to the most outstanding player in which college sport? Which college sport would you find the Heisman Trophy awarded in annually? Yeah, don't say it's easy because I'm not 100% sure. And I'm the smartest person in the world, obviously. Duh. 
Ooh, someone got very specific, and I like it. It's south of both Norway and Sweden. Thank you, Sarah. Sophie's Choice. Was it uh, um, Michael Scott said something was Sophie's Choice, and it was just yeah. <laughs> not at all yeah. Sophie's Choice. Yeah, Jess, that was basically my point of this question. Freak you out and then make you go, oh, wait, I know this. Uh, everybody got it. So at least I can feel okay in saying this one was easy. Somebody was even very specific. North American football, not Australian football, um, and not the glorious sport, soccer, football, as it's known everywhere else. Uh, the correct answer is football, college football. Cheers, everybody. That's a double social. This is going away. Question 28. Sriracha, or Sriracha, is a type of hot sauce named after a city located in what country? What country would you find the city Sriracha? Thank you, Jess. Thank you so much. I found it myself. Football, the correct sport with the name. Try to sriracha. Yeah, hey, Brad, did I'm not? I like sriracha, but I don't think. Uh, Brad, did you ever try that um, buffalo wing beer? I saw everybody posting about that in the the beer groups. I at first I thought it was a joke. Uh, I thought it was one of those fake beer websites that make joke beers as a joke, but it was real. You want to? Yeah, let me know if you do. I have to grab a little swig of that in a safe appropriately distanced cup not from your can uh the correct answer here is not china mexico sri lanka india japan cambodia costa rica philippines usa chile or colombia it is thailand thailand sri rancha love the sauce at mod pizza i like mod pizza yeah brad i want the waffle house beer bacon and waffles I want a beer too. No, just like, I don't want. We need some good stouts. All right, question 29. Published in the year 1978, The World According to Garp oh, my heart. was written by which American novelist? You can give me first name, last name, or just last name. Who wrote World According to Garp? I remember a movie with the kid winning the Heisman Trophy maybe in the 90s. I don't know that one, Christiane. I'm sure somebody does. Manny's Deli has a Pipeworks collaboration beer. No. Um, for, for the Chicago local people, did you see that? Did you see this? Liquid Love was just doing a collaboration with Goose Island. No. Which is pretty huge. Yeah. Yeah, we're yeah, very yeah. big fans of Liquid Love Brewing here, uh, and they just collabed with Goose Island. So I'm excited to see what comes out of that. All right, quite a few of you got this. Uh, it's not Garp. That would make sense. The World According to Garp by Garp. Uh, but it was John Irving, if you gave me last name or first and last name. Petition to stop using this gift. Never, Jim Sterner. This gift gives me life. Uh, I'm here for Nick Jonas. <sighs> After watching Kingdom, I'll never get enough Nick Jonas. Yeah, he loves Number 30. What was the name of John Candy's character in the 1987 movie Planes, Trains, and Automobiles? If you're not watching this film this week, what are you doing? What was the name of John Candy's character in the film Planes, Trains, and Automobiles? Just a first name's okay. Who let Jim have an account, Rich said? Jen's husband Stern had to log in to express that sentiment. Uh, Jim, I can I can understand because I do use it a lot, so I see where you're coming from. Um, but I love it. I'm going to keep using it. I'm sorry. If I can find more Nick Jonas gifts, um, I don't have to use that Nick Jonas gift. Like, I could use a different one, I guess. I'll use this Nick Jonas gift instead. There we go. That'll be better. All right, everybody's all right, in. All right. Oh, John says to be clear, he likes Nick Jonas. He's just not a fan of the gift. Oh, fair. So there we go. I got a new one for you. 
Uh, those aren't pillows. The correct answer is Dell. Dell. Uh, just a first name is fine. Uh, it was Dell Griffith, but uh, the king of the Midwest. yeah, Polka King in the Polka Polka Polka. What happened to Zach Efron? Wouldn't mind seeing him again. Yeah, I'm with you. All right, here we go. Final question number thirty-one. Ooh, this is tough. What is the acronym USB standing for when we're referring to the impossible to place oh, USB yeah. computer port? What does USB stand for? Three words. All right, needed three words here, and quite a few of you got this. The correct answer is universal serial bus. Universal serial bus. So good job, 19 of you got points on that one. Universal serial bus. All right, that's it. That's the final question. That is all we have in terms of questions tonight. All we have left to do is go over the final standings, which we're going to do. If you are in first, second, or third place, you're going to win yourself some taco bucks, which you can use for some prizes in the future. Again, Vega Tricks merchandise, beer and brewery merchandise, framed and autographed photo of taco, honestly. Um, we're going to put the final standings up on the screen. Before we do, a big thank you to those of you that decided to hang out with us tonight and put up with my rambling. Uh, thank you to those of you that donated um i may not have seen some come through so i apologize and thank you to those of you purchasing ornaments on the website we have a couple of those left so check it out we have also some merchandise t-shirts a couple hoodies left uh pint glasses social glasses so check it out that really helps us out around now um so we appreciate it guys every time you guys buy any merchandise from Vega Tricks, thank you so much please also join us the rest of this week wednesday music bingo at 7 p.m with bobby k and then at nine o'clock right after that we have friends trivia that's going to be a big one we'll be giving away some special friends prizes um i know for sure i have some friends stickers that i'll mail out to some uh random raffle people and then also i have uh one of these friend stationary sets that you see down in the corner here uh, i think i'll be giving one of those away so check it out come play friends trivia with us and then on friday general knowledge trivia again at 7 p.m. Uh, hit us up if you'd like to book a private event. Until next time, though, guys, here are the final standings. If I can click the right button. Dropkick Emily Murphy's finished in first place just 29 points ahead of second place. Super close finish. And then... Third place was only 10 points behind them. Sorella Sand was right there as well. Jen Widener in fifth. Mary B, first responders, Batty, DeCorns, and Jen Sterner rounding out the top 10. Congratulations, my friends. Great job. You guys finished super well. Um, so I think I've got the top three teams then. I've got your loyalty numbers. I'll add those points to it. <laughs> Woohoo, not last. Um, that's all for tonight. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you guys for the donations, those of you that sent them, and uh, thanks for all the love. We will see you soon, specifically Wednesday at the latest. Until then, be safe, take care of each other, wash your hands, wear your masks. Don't go anywhere if you don't have to, and we'll see you on Wednesday. Yay, we can celebrate Thanksgiving together. Yes, Thanksgiving <laughs> on Wednesday. Woohoo! Thanksgiving night.